Whiskey Jason here, whiskey from the viewpoint of American today in Ireland, here together with Jennifer Nickerson. <laughs> um, now, one other thing that we do notice, maybe, uh, Jennifer, you don't really have that typical Irish accent. Once okay. again, not everyone understands the, the, your history. Could you ex please explain, explain to us why you are here doing this? <laughs> yeah. And so um, I grew up in Scotland, which is why I do not have an Irish accent um, or I don't have much of an Irish accent. Some of the colloquialisms are starting to slip in now. Um, I grew up all over Scotland, so I would have lived everywhere from Orkney down to Girvan um, and spent a lot of time in Speyside. So if you know your Scottish distilleries, that's because my dad, yeah, worked for a lot of Scottish distilleries. So he managed Highland Park, Girvan Grain. Glenfiddich, Bavenny, Glenglassa, and so we moved around a lot to different distilleries. Um, but obviously then he also had the background to inspire us to get into whiskey. And then I married an Irishman, which resulted in me moving to Tipperary, which is how we get to where we are now. Very, very good. Thank you very much, because not everyone knew that. All right, very, very So we are in South Tipperary, uh, not too far from Cair, not too far from Grange Village. Uh, kind of a hard place to find as Jason will um, a test. tell him. Yes, a test, <laughs> thank you. Um, unless you've got a Google Mark coordinate. We're in an area called Ireland's Golden Vale. So it's called that because it's got amazing farmland. It stretches across um, part of the southwest of Ireland, southeast of Ireland, sorry. And it is um, an area that's called that because in the summertime when the crops start turning gold, the whole, there's whole fields around here that are just golden in colour. It's, um, I'll show you in a little minute. We've got our spring barley just planted at the back there and it's, it's going to gorgeous colour right now. Um, we are here, we're probably here in a more existential sense because my father Stuart visited here a few years ago and he was talking about making whiskey in Ireland and that was back when, slightly before the big explosion of new distilleries in Ireland he was talking about how he didn't understand why there weren't more distilleries here. Um, we've got great land for growing barley, which, and sorry, down here in Tipperary, um, it, it's really famous for water. Mm -hmm. So we essentially have the main ingredients for making whiskey. We've got a fairly temperate climate that's similar to Scotland, but a little bit warmer, so great for maturation. And he, he just didn't understand why there weren't more distilleries. Um, and he thought it, could be, it would be a really good idea if, we started our own whiskey distillery, and he's hugely passionate about whiskey. So we looked at it. Um, I was working in KPMG at the time, so I was living up in Dublin, and we. Um, and my husband's been, his family have been here for about 200 years, so they've been growing barley for a long time, and they'd. Liam was always thinking, or was thinking the past years about how they could diversify the farm out, and it just seemed like. A great opportunity to do something where we were uniquely qualified to do it with Stuart's experience. Um, I wouldn't have been able to even start on this without him. And we also had kind of a great background in growing the raw ingredient, and so it just seems like a complete no brainer. Like, why, why wouldn't we start making whiskey here? Um, so it's, it takes longer than you would think. Um, we are at planning stages, and I'll show you some drawings for the distillery that's planned. But we already have some of our casks down. Um, they should be arriving. We would have been arriving today, but unfortunately been delayed for a couple of weeks. But they are distilled, other distilleries, from grain that we grew here on the farm. And I'll, I'll let you try some, but for, for a start of grain, it's, we're delighted with them. So we are standing just on my right-hand side, your left-hand side. Um, down at the very bottom there, you'll see a small cottage that is um, where Liam's dad grew up and where his grandparents lived before that and their great-grandparents before that. Uh, this is the current residence built onto the side of that cottage. And right next door is the barn where we're going to be keeping our casks. Um, and these will be, this will be limited to the ones that have been growing here on Ballandoni Farm. So in a few years' time when the whiskey starts released, sorry, when the whiskey is released, then it'll be whiskey that's been growing here and has been matured here as well, which will give it something completely unique, I think. Mm -hmm. So we are going to put in about 100 casks into this area over here. So as you can see, there's plenty of space to expand after that. Um, what we're doing is we're taking the first ones down that we um, 
distilled from our own barley, so there's going to be a mix of single malt and pot still in there, and a big mis mix of casks as well, so sherry butts, um, there's some bourbon, there's a um, good bit of red wine, there are uh, possibly a port or a Madeira, and it will be lovely. I'm possibly. Madeira right now. <laughs> Um, and yeah, like this is this has taken us a while to get together. It's right beside the farmhouse. The farmhouse is literally just behind you there, about um, ten meters away. And so there's a good bit of fireproofing put in along here. Um, there's a fire alarm system had to get put in. Um, CCTV all around the place. You run CCTV right now. So Fabulous. Um, but yeah, no, it's, it's essentially just like an old shed that's been here since the '60s, I think. Mm -hmm. And we converted it into storing our casks. Yeah. Um, the, you know yourself, like maturation has such an effect on whiskey. And so having, although the stills aren't in yet, having it somewhere, having it in the same place that the barley was growing, mm. I think is going to make a real difference yeah. to the whiskey eventually. There is there's a fair bit of ventilation. And we've done our best to control all the holes where vermin might get in. Mm -hmm. But as you can as you can see from a quick look around, there's still plenty of airflow through. It does get warm. Like this has been a remarkably warm Irish summer, and you can feel it yourself. It's still. it is warm <laughs> in here. Yeah, but the floor is only partly concreted. Um, the majority over there, um, there's no concrete, and so that's going to help a little bit yeah. with regulating temperature in here. Mm -hmm. Excellent. So um, spring barley, I suppose, is not everything when it comes to whiskey but it's hugely important it's the raw ingredient it's where um the essence of your spirit is coming from now that essence is going to be influenced by the shape of your stills and by um the hardness of your water and by the type of yeast you use but essentially a lot of what goes into your initial spirit before it goes into the barrel is coming from here um, so this is taking up nutrients from the ground that's unique to Tipperary, that's unique to even this field. So like this field, um, we have spring barley in, there is another field just over there behind trees. And those fields are slightly different in themselves. Even across the field you'll get areas that are slightly different. So our field will be slightly different to one that's in North Tipperary, it'll be completely different to one that's in Carlow. Um, it'll be completely different to grain that's brought in from abroad. So you're, by doing something with barley that we've grown ourselves, um, A, we know exactly where it's grown and what's gone into it. So if we get an amazing whiskey in a few years' time, we can look at what the weather was like that year. We can look at um, how we grew the barley, when we planted, when we harvested, exactly what um, the vital components were. And we can also... Um, we're also doing something that's uniquely ours. So we're taking this and we're watching it all the way through. And when it comes at the end, we're giving people something unique. It's a spirit that can't be replicated, that can't be reproduced anywhere else because it's from our land. And we're going to talk a little bit about the spirit here at Tipperary. Please explain what you're going to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think Jason actually knows. No. <laughs> um, so what we um, we've spoken a little bit about my barley already, and um, what we do right now because we don't have our stills in yet. Hopefully, by next year. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'll be so relieved. <laughs> what we do is we. Um, dry our barley, store it, malt it, and then take it to be distilled elsewhere. Um, I'm not sure I'm allowed to see both the distilleries that are doing it for us, but we have two distilleries that have distilled grain for us so far. One has distilled a single malt, and the other one has distilled a pot still. It was a 50% malted, 50% unmalted. Yeah. So you malt yourself? Um, no, I wish we malted okay, ourselves. Uh, the first, the first batch we did, there was no one in Ireland that was small yeah. enough to do it. The, it had to be at least a hundred tons. We only had fifty, so we had to put it in a trailer, go to Scotland, get it malted in Scotland, and bring it back again. There has since been set up um, an amazing guy who does craft malting, and he malted. Um, he was doing it in batches of, I want to say, ten tons, mm -hmm. and so he did about. Um, I think he did 10 tons molten, um, 10 tons unmalted, and then we sent that up to the guys. I'm not meant to say that, am I? Nope. <laughs> you sent it up to the guys, up to the guys. You only said up to the guys. Yeah, yeah, we sent it, we sent it up to the guys. And From Tipperary, everything's up, by the way. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're in the south. Um, 
we send that up to the guys and the guys distills it for us um and it is i think it's i think it's pretty amazing okay. i can tell you which one's single malt and which one's pot still or you can pick your favorite and then find out i'm going to pick my favorite and then find out Let's Excellent. see if I can. Let's see if I can find out. That's the question. Hopefully, you taste a difference. Or we have a serious problem. <laughs> well, you don't have the problem. I have the problem. It's my sensory um, <laughs> perception here that's going to be tested. Great. All right. So, okay. So um, we've got two sets of glasses. Mm. One of them. Oh, sorry. Why not? You can do it. Uh, one of them has uh, a temporary logo on it. One of them is blank. Uh. Thankfully, today I didn't pick up someone else's branded glasses. <laughs> I, I've done that before. Okay, very different. I also yes, brought my own. They are different. But still, I'm wrong. <laughs> <laughs> There's a very grainy smell. Mm -hmm. No. Just so I can say, I've never had pot still whiskey moonshine, white dog, straight from the the, 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 the still. So this is also for me um, a first in my life, all right? So very, very good. So I identified incorrectly, I think, that this is the pot still, and this is the single malt, correct? Without the label. Yep. So yep. What is yep? This is... That's a single malt. That is a single malt, all right. That's more grain forward. It is more grain forward. Okay. The other good. one is, uh, that is, is definitely very, <laughs> apologies, I'm chatting away without the microphone. No, no. Um, it's definitely very grainy, whereas the other one is um, a little bit chewier, yeah. I think, mm -hmm. a little bit, a little bit oilier. Yeah. Even on the nose, it's mm -hmm. quite oily. Yeah. Okay. So keep on talking if you'd like, and I'm going to try the two, and I'm going to see if I can differentiate. Yeah. Like, I think, um, I, don't, I don't think the things that you would expect to be different are different in them. Like, I would have thought that pot still would be grainier, and I don't think it is necessarily. Mm -hmm. It's more of a textural difference. There's, there's definite difference there. Oily. Yeah, mm -hmm. really oily. Yep. Yep, and wow. it's something that you see in pot stills generally, but it's, it's just kind of funny that you like i never try pot still in that form <laughs> yeah, yeah <laughs> so, yes. so this is also for me the first the ever to have that um possibility now not everyone understands what pot still whiskey is mm -hmm. uh, not everyone knows about all about irish whiskey could you please explain that what's that difference really i could i'm going to preface this with um <laughs> the admission that i hate the term pot still whiskey because i think it could have been called mix mash it could have been called um it could have been called a realm of different things but it's not it's called pot still and we are where we are um pot still whiskey is a mix of um malted and unmalted barley and then i think it's up to three percent of a different grain so let, let's say wheat or rye or anything the enzymes as well yeah so and the the issue, as Jason kind of alluded to there, is that it's far easier to distill malted barley because you've already almost kick-started that process. Whereas it's far harder and quite often enzymes are needed to distill unmalted barley. And as you can see, you also get a slightly different flavour through from the unmalted barley. Um, this is a 50% malted and 50% unmalted, I think I mentioned that. Mm. And... Pot still is also generally distilled in a pot still, which is where the confusion starts to arise with the term because there's obviously then grain whiskey is distilled in a column still and single malt whiskey is distilled in a pot still. And then when you start talking to people about pot still whiskey who haven't encountered Irish whiskey before, they tend to think you mean that whiskey, that it, that it is whiskey that's distilled in a pot still. And the whole thing gets very confusing because we're all talking about different pot stills. Mm -hmm. um, so that's why I dislike the term slightly, but it's, it's, it's the term is. <laughs> Terminology is something we're not going to create at the moment. Yeah. So we are here in Tipperary, but actually the new distillery will not be on site. It's going to be someplace else. Tell us a little bit about those dreams and those plans. <laughs> yep, so we are... Um, Building on the site of Dundrum House Hotel, which is about it's about a 25 minute drive from here. 
Um, it's 10 minutes from the Rock of Cashel, if anyone's been to Cashel and has done the tourist activities down there, and about 10 minutes off the motorway as well, so it's nice and handy. Um, we we got we were looking for investment for our distillery on the farm. We initially had planning permission here, and we got chatting to the guys that um, had the now owned Dundrum House Hotel, and they were interested in a distillery on site. Um, and eventually, through a lot of talking and uh, <laughs> after a lot of meetings, um, it was decided that we would build on their site. Um, I suppose there's uh, the main advantage is the experience it's going to give everyone. It means that people can come. They can like we're going to be, I think, the only one in Ireland with uh, only hotel in Ireland with a distillery right on site. So you can come, you can drink whiskey, you can stay overnight, you can play around to golf in the morning because we've got a golf course and um, we've got a leisure club so you can have go to leisure club <laughs> go to the spa have a spa and so on yeah. now it's still you're going to be within like a 30 mile radius and that's yeah. what we consider at least in the america grain to glasses within the 30 mile radius so you still qualify congratulations thank you thank you i actually didn't know that about <laughs> oh, the american yes. 30 miles so that's great news so i don't know if it's written in the books but it's actually one of those unwritten laws that they try to follow so yeah welcome <laughs> that's fantastic news yeah. Yeah, no, it's like they've been they've been really good. Like they're allow like not allowing us, but they are fully on board with our grain to glass mm -hmm. ethos, yeah. and so we're bringing all that on board. We're still bringing the story along, but it means that we're getting access to we're get, this. The pictures I'm about to show you are far bigger than we originally intended. Um, there's uh, th there's far more there for um, tourism than we originally intended, and so it is going to be it, it's going to be far more of an experience for people to come to visit rather than poor Jason who has just been around my farm. Right. Now, I'm, I'm just going to interrupt you for a second because tourism is so important for the whiskey industry and so important for Ireland. Yeah. Um, in Germany, I just was for a couple months ago and um, in the middle of Germany, and there's a guy who has a castle now, and he's building his whiskey castle. And so he has this distillery. It's been up for six years now. The mayor asked him, hey, there's a, dis there's a castle I don't know what to do with. We've invested Europe, Germany, the state of Turingen, 20 million into that castle, and they didn't have a concept. And he said, okay, uh, well, maybe I can do the Whiskey Castle. And now it's going to turn into a major tourist destination. It's between Berlin and Hanover on the Autobahn. 10-minute drive, exactly what you are doing, exactly what you need. Yeah. And because of the people that are coming there, you get a lot more um, a word of mouth um, and you get a lot more people actually figuring out what's going on there. And it's better than being out on the boondocks here where you need um, <laughs> you need Google Maps to find the place, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> yeah, no, it's like this is not the easiest location right. to get to. I know you said it earlier, but it's, it's not. And yeah. <laughs> Like Dundrum's right on the tourist path. Yeah, it's <laughs> yeah, and tourism tourism's a big thing, not just yeah. for I suppose um, on a slightly more altruistic level, it's good for the industry as a whole. Mm -hmm. But for us personally, it's yeah. good to be able to have people come along and we can explain exactly what we're doing. We can interact with them and tell them about yeah. our story rather than rather than trying to tell it through advertising or through mm -hmm. like something that's n not really real. Yeah. It allows them to properly get into what we're doing. Mm -hmm. Would you like to show us the pictures? Yes, I love showing pictures. <laughs> so, do you want so, me to hold them up? Um, I, I will hold and you will describe. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is really this, wacky. This is fantastic. I know. Okay. This is like, we're going back to the this dark is ages. Show and tell, third grade. <laughs> this is, uh, yeah, this is exactly what this is. So, what you can see in this is a front view of the distillery. As currently seen from roughly um, the driving range on Dundrum House Hotel or the 18th hole is just over here. So visitors car park here, screened off by some lovely trees. The distillery is over here and as you can see there's an interesting upper level that we'll get into in a second. So this is a map of the overall location. Um, she says looking down slightly. It's from my perspective, it's slightly upside down. So I'm just going to, um, this is the hotel here. I'm sorry when I say it's upside down because I'm used to looking at it the other way. <laughs> um, the hotel is here. There's a golf club um, just on the side of it here. The leisure center is around here as well. And this is a lovely old manor house, um, which is being restored at the same time. Um, there's, there's a lot of time and money being spent on the hotel and manor house. So it will be gorgeous when it's up and going. Um, anyway, you come down and there's a bridge over the Maltine River here and then there's a car park just on the left-hand side 
and the right hand side here is where the distillery is located. So that's less than a five minute walk from the hotel, the manor house here, to the distillery. And um, these are some houses that are just up the road. This is a top down view. Obviously we're going from the boring pictures to the interesting ones. <laughs> Um, so this this is essentially the roof of the distillery. That that is completely uninteresting. You can see washbacks here, mm -hmm. which is slightly more interesting, and you can see the car park again. But yeah, that's that's again an, another uninteresting drawing. Keep on talking then. Okay, yeah, good. good. So on, yes. <laughs> yeah, so this is a visitor's car park here, and this is the entrance. So when you come through. This is the reception area in here. And then you come through into the circulation center and the tour and tour center. So that's where we'll be telling you about um, a bit more about the farm in case you're not getting to visit it. Um, we'll tell you a bit more about how we make our whiskey. We'll tell you a little bit about um, Dundrum House Hotel. All those sorts of interesting things before you actually start the tour. Um, bathrooms are on your left here just in case you're looking for them when you come and visit us. And then there's a lift up to the top floor which is going to take you into the area where you will come onto the top floor to do your tour. Just to finish um, down here though, you can see like all the slightly less interesting parts like our distribution room, our boiler room is over here, our bulk effluent tanks, um, all that sexy stuff is all along the back here, malt intakes, byproduct out, things like that, really interesting stuff. Um, but these are these are the bits that all the whiskey people are going to be interested in. Um, these still need these stills need moved around slightly, but as you can see, there's three stills here. There's a wash still, an intermediate, and a spirit still. Um, there's a hot effluent tank just there. Um, these are your washbacks out here, so there'll be two inside for the tour, and then the first two will be going outside. And then as we expand, we've got room to put out more. Um, that's a process water tank, which is, again is part of the slightly uninteresting stuff. If you can see here, that's our mash tun, and that's a conversion vessel. So if you haven't visited a pot still whiskey distillery before, because the unmalted barley isn't as easy to distill, you need a conversion vessel to start that process before it's distilled. So that's why that's in there. And we'll have the option to make both single malt and pot still whiskey. These are just offices. So all our back office stuff is down here on the one side. Um, to your tasting area here for where you fin when you finish and then all the production is around the side of it here and upstairs we have some fun stuff so we've put in a whole event space upstairs that you can book out to have your parties and it'll hold about 100 150 people and there's an outside terrace with a bar here as well so if you get remarkably good weather as we have been recently you can actually ignore the rain that came on there jason if you get remarkably good weather in ireland you can stay out here on the terrace then, um, yeah, this is like just more back office stuff, like our keg store for our bar, our furniture store for our event space, things like that. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Um, this is, so this just shows, um, this is actually more of an interesting thing about, I didn't think about all the stuff that has to be done, but this shows our circulation. Um, so for front of house and back of house. Mm -hmm. um, this one shows elevations. So this is one of the ones that has to be changed because as you can see, this again, this probably isn't a whiskey thing, it's more a construction thing mm -hmm. that I've learned, but I'm like, because the gantry level to view into the stills was going to be lower than this level, it was going to cause us problems with um, access, mm -hmm. say for, for people in wheelchairs or had mobility issues. So we had to move, it was easier for us to move this gantry level up. So it was on the same floor. So anyone, um, so our tour will now run, so there's an elevator up, round through and just straight up on this level. And um, this is, all your viewers probably know that whiskey still is on stilts. So they're not just on the ground like that. So this all had to be tweaked slightly so that the stills were raised up. <laughs> and so the gantry level was at the right level. So you actually be able to look in because right now your viewing hole would be there. Mm -hmm. um, these are all elevations. So that just shows it from the northeast viewpoint. As you can see, it's all glass here. So you can see mm -hmm. through to the stills. Um, this is our rear elevation, which is slightly less interesting. And this is a side elevation. So this is the one that you'll be viewing when you come down from the hotel and it'll have that big glass area with the three stills and then the entryway just on the bottom left. Yeah, they're, they're just gorgeous like this. Um, we sent over a lot of pictures of old buildings and new buildings. And so, um, as you can see, we've screened it off largely from the hotel. So we didn't want to be something that was really imposing and really commercial on the grounds of an old manor house but at the same point in time we didn't want it to look as you got closer as if we were trying to be part of the manor house so this is a bit modern 
a bit different, but at the same point in time, it's not overwhelming the landscape because it's so well sheltered. Jason's getting very tired of all the pictures I have of my future distillery. Um, this is what you'll see when you're inside my... You're still excited, though. I <laughs> am. I'm so crazy. happy. Yeah, <laughs> no one else cares about this as much as me. I, I will be excited when I'm there. <laughs> <laughs> when it's finished. Um, yeah, this is actually just more pictures. You can move on, Jason, if you want. It's our distillery from different mm -hmm. viewpoints and different aspects. Um, this is an internal one from inside the event space. So as you can see, there's a lot of glass. It just means you can look out over the stills in there. And these are all the pictures that were inspiration for what we did. Exactly. Yeah. So you'll see there's a kind of mix of old and new and... We take inspiration from, from different parts of it. There you go, that wasn't too bad, was it? That was it. Whiskey Jason here, whiskey from the viewpoint of American in Europe, now in Ireland, together with... Jennifer Nickerson. From? Tipperary Boutique Distillery Limited. Ciao. Ciao.